for the Masters of Educational Leadership um, virtual student panel discussion. Uh, my name is Tom Kresh. I will be your host tonight. I am our Director of Graduate Admissions at Commonwealth U. Appreciate your time. There's a lot of other things that you could be doing right now, uh, but you're choosing to spend that time with us to you know, continue to learn more about both of our principal certification and our supervisory certification programs. Um, whether you're watching live or you're watching the recording, again, please do not hesitate to reach out to us. We are happy to help in any way that we can. Um, the event should take probably around 30 or 40 minutes. We have um, some of our best and brightest um, on our on our student panel here so we can explore the student experience in, in each of the programs. Um, if anybody has any questions for those who are watching live, please feel free to put them in chat or the Q&A, and I'll be sure to get them to um, Aaron, Holly, and Dr. Starmack. Um, but before we go any further, if everyone could just introduce themselves, and we could start with uh, Dr. Starmack. Good evening. Thanks for your attendance today and or watching this online. My name is Dr. Tom Starmack. I am the department chair for the Counseling and Educational Leadership Department and the program coordinator for the Masters of Educational Leadership with Principal Cert or Supervisory Certification. Great, thank you, Dr. Starmack. And uh, Aaron. Hi, everybody. My name is Aaron Bonsall. I am a middle school learning support teacher at Jersey Shore Middle School. Um, this is my 10th year teaching, and I'm currently enrolled at Commonwealth in the Principal Cert program, and I should be finishing in May. Awesome. Awesome. And uh, Holly. My name is Holly Scheib. I am currently finishing the principal certification in May alongside Aaron. I am a teacher in the Line Mountain School District, and I'm excited to be here and help you. Um, Great. Great. Well, thank you. So we'll start off with the with the softball here. Um, you chose to come to uh, the Commonwealth for this program for, you know, for the principal cert program. Um, why did you choose to come here? And I think both of you have master's degrees, you know, uh, other master degree programs, right? So you could have gone elsewhere. You chose to come here. Why uh, Commonwealth? We can start with that, Aaron. Yeah, so I actually got my first graduate degree from Bloomsburg University and had a really great experience. Um, that, that I did at a little bit slower pace. Sure. That took me about three years to complete. And then after some time and, and learning with some leadership roles in my current role in my school, I chose to pursue the principal cert after learning about the special ed supervisory as well. And I felt that the principal cert was more the direction that I wanted to go. So I had a really great experience. And then with some recruitment from my principals, I, I couldn't help but choose Commonwealth again. Sure. No, that's, that's a good answer. It's a good answer. Uh, Holly. So I as well have a master's degree. Uh, mine's in health and phys ed from IUP. I completed that master's program in about 18 months. Mm -hmm. And all along since 2018, I've been taking courses off and on. And those between those years, my current administration kept giving me a nudge to pursue principal certification. So they saw something in me that I didn't necessarily see in myself at the time. Mm -hmm. But some personal issues started to challenge me and I became confident in my abilities. And that's when I started looking into various programs. One program that I looked into mainly you were experiencing it in an internship. I wanted more. I wanted to take classes. I wanted to learn. I wanted to dive head first so I could be as prepared as I possibly could for the seat as a principal. Sure. So um, one of the things that probably helped you make your decision was the courses and, and the coursework and the program delivery. Um, one of the things that makes our program a little more unique is, is the course delivery. So how did that play a role in, in your decision to choose our program in terms of, you know, a lot of the courses are going to be offered synchronous and there's going to be uh, projects and it's hands on as opposed to, you know, almost like asynchronous um, related um, modules. Um, Aaron. Yeah, so my my big reason for choosing Commonwealth to pursue the principal cert was because of the synchronous sessions. I didn't want something that was self-paced. I wanted something where I was engaged and I was able to apply my learning. And also we had discussed multiple times before that this was an, an ability for me to network. And mm -hmm. Holly and I are, are truly <laughs> network buddies. Um, 
we have built our, our friendship through these courses and, and being able to connect with one another. And there are other classmates too. And I think those synchronous sessions held me more accountable as well as meeting more people and, and becoming more aware of what other school districts are doing than just simply my own. Yeah, no, that's a great answer. Well, Holly. So I always reflect back to my my first master's degree, and that one, again, was self-paced. This one was completely different, whereas this one, Commonwealth, again, I had to balance my life and hold myself accountable to attend the courses, and I love being able to dive head first. And again, like Aaron said, network with people. Whereas with my first master's program, it was, here's the work, get it done, submit it, move on. And it was almost surface level. Whereas this, you were, and Dr. Sharmak again, makes up, makes us think higher level. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate that. Whereas my first master's, it was, here's the work, do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When you figure when you graduate and you get a principal job or a supervisory level job, right? Um, the training wheels are off, right? There is no more help. Like that's it. Everyone is looking to you for leadership. So you've got to be prepared. Um, there isn't a lot of, uh, hold on, let me, let me go make a couple phone calls. You know, let me phone, a, you know, let me uh, phone a friend here. Um, so I would imagine that level of dedication that that's required to do well in this program is going to be better preparation down the road. Um, and I should mention this too. So um, Aaron and Holly, you're both in the principal certification program, uh, but there are a lot of similarities in uh, between the principal certification program and the supervisory certification program. Um, Dr. Starma, could you just make the connection between the two? And, and I guess, is, is that accurate in, in the, the degree of similarity? Yeah. So course-wise, the programs are identical minus two classes. So the supervisory cert folks would take a curriculum theory design class and a curriculum and instruction evaluation course that the principal candidates do not take. And the principal candidates take a the effective school principal course and a special ed law class that the supervisory students do not take. Both are required to do an internship, but the principal certification internship is twice as many hours. It's 360 hours, where the supervisory internship is 180 hours. And in every class, the assignments are job, many of the assignments are job embedded assignments and our principal candidates look at it from a building level mm -hmm. where our supervisory look at it from a district level because their decision-making is going to impact the entire district where a principal's decision, even though there's a ripple effect district-wide, it mainly only impacts that building level. Mm -hmm. So that's the main nuance differences between, but the delivery of the classes and the interactions and things that Holly and Aaron are discussing are the same in either program. Okay, no, that's good. I know whether, again, for the, the people who are watching live or those watching the recording, probably considering one or both of the programs, so I just want to make the connection there. Um, Can Aaron, I, since oh, yeah. you brought that up, just to piggyback, many students will start in one. And then you only have to take two classes in an internship and you can get the other cert. So often people come back and piggyback in. Uh, right now, six of my principal candidates are already coming back and doing the last little bit that they need to get supervisory. Mm -hmm. And I have three supervisory that are going to graduate with the master's and then continue on and finish out the principal side. So it is pretty easy and that's deliberate in the design of the programs. Mm -hmm. Now, what's the benefit of having both of the uh, certifications then? So in the state of Pennsylvania, the principal certification is the second most powerful. The superintendency is the most powerful. But with a principal cert, you can hold any supervisory position. Mm -hmm. So I could still be a supervisor of curriculum instruction. I could be a supervisor of special ed. I can be a supervisor of gifted because I have that principal's license. Where supervisory license, whatever the specialty of that supervisory is, that's the only thing I can supervise. So why would I want to do supervisory? Well, there's a lot of people that want to get into administration, but don't want to be a building principal. So the supervisor of curriculum instruction is a general one that allows you to be a curriculum director. And then some bigger school districts, such as um, Hazleton, Central Dauphin, Philly, Pittsburgh, any of the major cities, Scranton. Uh, York, et cetera, they have supervisory positions and they want that supervisory cert because they feel the training is looking through that district lines. And then there's other agencies such as an intermediate unit, some private charter schools, and or you might have uh, some private training areas 
Patan or Patton, depending on how you say it, they also hire people that, and they look for people with a supervisory cert because it's more of a bigger program that they're, or multiple districts that they're working with versus a singleized building. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the nuanced difference between it. And there is a separate practice exam for both programs, each depending on what cert you're going for, you'll take a different praxis exam. I see. Okay. That's interesting. I didn't know that. Okay. Um, so Aaron and, and Holly, as you know, you're, you're, you're very busy, right? Um, you have full-time teaching jobs. You, uh, I, I think you mentioned you have families and now you're also in a, a grad student and, you know, intense graduate program. How, what's the work life, work life school balance like? How are you managing that? There might be some people wondering, geez, oh man, you know, how am I going to have time to do this? Um, can you shed some light on what it's like to be able to navigate this program while having a basically a full, um, you know, a full life in, in a number of other ways, uh, Aaron? Yeah, so I, th I think people who are naturally going to go into this program have that drive already. Um, if, if you're pursuing to be a school leader, to me, you have that natural motivation, you have that natural, um, let's get the work done. And I think as I think it depends on the person. So me, I wanted to be done fast. I wanted to get the coursework done because I knew that there's potential positions in my district that I love coming available. And I wanted to be a candidate for those. And I wanted to, I wanted everything to be fresh. Mm -hmm. So I moved through this and I know Holly was with me. We moved through this at a very fast pace. And I think Dr. Starmack he has, he was, he's our, he's my advisor and I believe he's Holly's as well, but he, he's kind of like, look, when we first initially entered the program, you tell me what you want to do. How quick do you want to get this done? It, you, you decide your, your pace and, and you have that option. Now, I, again, you're a working parent, you're, I'm a T-ball coach. Like you, you, you learn to prioritize and, and classes, I don't want to speak for all professors, but it's not often they run that full three hours. But my family knows that I am unavailable for those three hours. So during that time, that's my schoolwork time, whether it's getting my materials prepared for the week, um, the reading material. And as for the assignments, you know about the assignments. They're, they're intentionally not to be done at a, at a high rate. <laughs> they're intentionally be thought for to be applied to what you're doing in your in your school system now and how you can um how you can grow from those experiences it's it's that's the big difference between this program that I'm going through now and even my undergraduate I felt like I was just going through the motions but we're being more intentional now and that that's the the goal is for the application and the intention to be applying the material to what you're doing and have a different lens so transitioning from a teacher, uh, even though I'm still a teacher, I now have an administrative lens when I'm looking at situations to help me through that internship. Mm -hmm. So again, I, I think it's a person by person basis, but you're naturally going to, to be motivated and driven. And mm -hmm. honestly, <laughs> it, it's hard now because I, I have this I have a lot under my belt with these courses and it's hard not to critique current systems because you feel so much more confident knowing a lot of the material. And I was talking with a group of students in the last semester and they're taking school law right now. Mm -hmm. And I had said, I wish I had school law in my undergraduate before I even became a teacher. So I, I think you'll find the benefits of that if you're pursuing that degree. Sure. So, um, Aaron, you had mentioned that you wanted to take the courses and and basically get them out of the way quickly. So when you say that, what does your schedule look like each week? Or like, is it how many classes are you taking a semester? How many hours a week are you typically dedicating to, to schoolwork? So to, to give you a synopsis, I mean, I, as a teacher, the best part that I thought was having a heavy load in the summer. Yeah. Because I relied heavily on childcare. I still sent my child to daycare every single day because that was my time to get that done. So I started last January. I took two introductory courses last January. I took an intro to ed leadership 
And then I took the special ed law course mm -hmm. and special ed law was, was comfortable to me because I teach special ed. So I felt like they were paired very nicely together. Mm -hmm. And then over the summer, I took the school law and the effective school principal. And I'm so glad that I took the two over the summer because of what they entailed. Um, they, they were a heavy load and it would have been hard for me to take both of those at the same time working. So um, then in the fall, again, I had two courses and it, as well as an internship, but your internship is job embedded. So they were things that I was already doing for the courses that were required. They were things that my, my school was offering for me or opportunities that I saw within my school district that I could do within the school day. And then now I'm down to one course and finishing out that internship. Mm -hmm. And you just learn to prioritize timing. You look at your schedule for a long and in, in long term, you look at your personal schedule as well as your school schedule and you prioritize what's most important now and where am I going in the future? And I some weeks I, I'm engulfed a lot more, um, especially with the internship overlapping. Mm -hmm. uh, especially Tuesdays are my busier day at schools because I have to go in early to an elementary and then I go late for, for the high school internship hours. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, it's hard to put a time limit <laughs> on everything, right. but I I, th I think it's like kind of the work smarter, not harder. And as a teacher, cool. sometimes I use my prep period if I need to, or my lunch period. So that if I know I have a busy night as a t-ball coach, I got to get some stuff done beforehand. So <laughs> sure. No, that's helpful. Thank you, Aaron. Uh, Holly. Well, I'm not going to lie. It's been a challenge balancing life mm -hmm. and classes. Um, my son, he was diagnosed with autism and ADHD. So he has some behavioral challenges. And mm -hmm. oftentimes as I was sitting in class, life was unfolding behind me. Thank goodness I've been muted. However, we made it work. I've been relying heavily on my father-in-law, my mom, my husband, just to keep them at bay so I can do what I need to do. Mm -hmm. As far as the workload goes, you have to be prepared to put in the work. You show up for class for an hour and a half, two hours, but then you need to be prepared to put in, I would say, a good 10 to 15 hours beyond that. Mm -hmm. If you are like Aaron and myself, probably even more, but you have to be ready for that. And, and, prioritizing, like Aaron said, is a must. You have to look at your week and divide the workload across the week. You cannot wait to the last minute or you will be sinking very quickly. And I see Dr. Starmick has his hand in there. Go ahead and finish. Oh, okay. So again, it's been, it's been, it's been a journey and we're, we're, nearing the end and it feels amazing to look back and reflect on all of the hard work that we have put into it especially over the summer Aaron and my like we were going crazy back and forth like communicating but we made it through I took two courses in the spring intro to ed leadership and data-driven decisions over the summer we did the effective principal and school law and we began the internship process in the fall I did curriculum instruction again, continue the internship. Mm -hmm. And this spring I'm doing the special ed law and um, Dr. Starmack's organizational behavior, again, wrapping up the internship. I'm actually right now in the middle of class for special ed, but my professor has graciously allowed me to pop over and be a part of this. So again, the professors have been amazing. They're willing to work with you mm -hmm. and accommodate you. And it's it's been great. So that's two points I want to make is that Many of the courses, the time you're there synchronously, it's not lecture. Mm -hmm. You are engaged in activities. You're doing case studies. You're doing role plays. We're building not just your knowledge, but the skills necessary to be an effective principal. So uh, I can't speak for every professor, but I think we in the program take a, as a philosophy that we need to best prepare them to sit in the role of the, the principal the best we can. So we're intentional in what we do. And I always explain to students, if they don't do their work outside and come prepared, their colleagues are going to call them out on it because it's going to impact their learning because their colleagues aren't ready for a class. 
-hmm. And some of the classes we have eclectic. So we have school counselors that might take some of the courses with mm -hmm. reading specialists that might take some of the courses along with uh, special ed supervisory people. And then we have some students that are just taking it as an elective, but they're all treated the same because it's a leadership program. So we have high expectations that you're going to lead and you're not going to just sit back and follow. And um, I think that's a, that's a big piece of how we design the program that might be a little different than some other programs. Mm -hmm. No, that's a great point. Um, Aaron, did you have something else to add? Yeah, I was going to reiterate, uh, Dr. Starmack had said that the courses, the live sessions are not lecture. Um, they're, they're the fun, they're the fun courses. They're mm -hmm. the ones. And to be honest, I, I love looking forward to my classes because I, I leave feeling invigorated especially because the courses, a lot of the overlapping, you have people who are in the higher ed and that's a different perspective. But if you're going to be a school principal, especially I'm looking at potential high school, eventually um, having minimal experience, having that higher ed connection kind of builds a little bit of background. If I were to apply for a high school role, knowing that my students could potentially be going into higher ed someday. Um, and then you have the school counselor perspective, as well as some other uh, majors that are, are trick, trickled in there. But mm -hmm. I leave my classes feeling invigorated and excited and, and wanting to, to fulfill the role of a leader one day. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it, it makes out of the out of class assignments worth it because you're, you're really applying that. And I can remember Dr. Starmack had our, our last semester, our supervisory of curriculum and instruction course. And uh, we were doing a role play, just a trial. And it was, it was really intimidating, but um, I, I loved it. That was one of the highlights of my entire semester, I feel. And I believe I told Dr. Starmack and, and Holly texted me after. She's like, I can't believe you told him we should do more. And we did. And that really challenged your nerves it challenged your anxiety but also left me feeling invigorated because here I am role playing a future leader you know and and I appreciated that I have professors similar to Dr. Starmack who want the feedback who want to know what what do you want to do so that we can improve your your skills and like I said that that motivation that drive that's what's going to get you there in the end and you're going to have that self your pride when you're finished because you feel proud that you're applying the knowledge. So. Yeah. Honestly, Aaron and Holly, you both sound very confident. Like it sounds like when you leave class when you complete the, 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 the curriculum, it's like, you just, you sound confident. Um, and that's good. That's what you want. Right. Um, so that's, that's great. Um, so as you look at, you know, you, you're nearing the end of your academic journey here, you've taken a lot of courses. What has been, your favorite or your most enjoy, um, or I guess, enjoyable class that you've taken so far in the program? Oh, Aaron. I can't really pick one. Um, I feel like there are a lot of highlights. Really, to those surface level classes, your intro classes, they were great, but I really love the classes. So I still rave about our school law course, and that was the most intense course I've ever taken but it was the most applicable and it made me really shift my lens. And I think because I took it over the summer, I had a fresh perspective starting this school year. So when I'm in conversations now throughout my internship, um, I can look, I, I, I pull out my pocket guide. It was the book that we had and I go back mm -hmm. and I look, okay, I have a kid who has an IEP and he has suspension. Come, there's there's suspension issues. I'm going back and I'm I'm forcing myself to go back into our school law book and really look at the scenarios that were in there. Um, I really love that course and I really love. I mean, I I can't like I said I'm I'm loving the course we're taking now and the supervisory one. Um, I also love the effective school principal because of, um. It a lot. Dr. Starmack put a lot of the responsibility on the cohort. You're planning this. These are your tasks, but you need to figure out as a team what you need to accomplish. And there were a lot of people in that course who were at different parts of their in different parts of their journey. 
so I, well, there was one person in our course who had already taken the Praxis. And since she was in there, that was really great for us to get some resources to get prepared for the Praxis exam when we're done. Mm -hmm. um, we had, it was just, I can't pick one. And if I had to, I, I wish you would have said, give me your top five experiences. <laughs> Cause I think that would have been easier for me, but the reason it's so hard for me to choose is because I find all of those applicable and I feel more confident and it, it, it makes me want to j just to continue. I don't want to stop. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's great. Thank you, Eric. Now, Holly. Mine would probably have to be school wall. And I, as I said to my administrators, I feel like every teacher should be required to take school law. That that class opened my eyes to many different things throughout my 16 years teaching that I was not aware of. And I, like Aaron, pull that pocket pocket manual out and refer back to it as my admin are currently engaged in a disciplinary action during my internship hours. Uh, I also love the organizational behavior that we are currently taking and just building capacity within your building and relationships. Yeah, no, that, that's great. And Dr. Starmack, actually, do you have a class that you, like, what's your favorite class to teach if you had to pick one? Well, I'll, to be honest, I was reluctant about taking on school law and finance because it really is two classes that I had to merge into one. And the previous professor who retired a long time ago neglected the finance piece and really mm -hmm. just did surface level of finance and spend more time on the law because the law is critically important. But in the context of where we are today with shrinking revenues and increasing expenditures, we have to be resourceful in what we're doing with our money. So I was intentional in how I can give them a nice, deep understanding of school finance and open their eyes in the school finance, as well as still cover everything that's necessary in law. So I've enjoyed that challenge. Uh, but my favorite by far is organizational behavior. Um, just it's a funner. It's I think it's a fun class. The content in there is challenging. I have developed my own three dimensional model on organizational behavior and leadership and have been fortunate enough to publish a book uh, that's surrounded that area. And I've done numerous consulting work in private agencies, public schools, uh, larger intermediate units, et cetera, around culture and organizational behavior and accountability. A lot of the concepts that we learn in organizational behavior is where my passion lies as far as consulting work and so forth. So that would be my favorite class to teach. I've taught them all. I taught every class in the program. So mm -hmm. um but being department chair, my responsibilities kind of get shifted and I get taken away from the classroom a little bit. So therefore, I do try to rely on and we're, we're starting to get better at infusing current principles and current um, leaders to take on some of the responsibilities as being instructors and then guest speakers at different times throughout the program and in the courses. So. And Dr. Starmack, you're a former, um, is a high school principal, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, about eight years as a high school, middle school building principal. Uh, I spent a semester as assistant superintendent. Then the superintendent got bought out of his contract. So by law, I took over as superintendent. Mm -hmm. And then I spent one year as uh, an elementary school principal. So I've been a principal at every level and also administrator at district level. And, and that's, that's in Western Pennsylvania. In Western PA. Yeah. And I think that's one of the, the, the you know, the great things about our program, too, is not only are the faculty practitioners of of the subject matter that they're teaching, um, but also, uh, you know, uh, administrators are worked into the program. So, like, I know one of the things that um, that is nice is the the mentorship um, opportunity. Um, Dr. Summer, can you first talk about the mentorship and then Aaron and Holly, I'm hoping you can expand about what your experience has been like with your mentor. So when, when a student enrolls in the program, I always ask, have they told their principal or their curriculum director or assistant superintendent, if they're supervisory, that they've enrolled in the program? And if not, they need to do that immediately because they're going to rely on them to gain access to bounce ideas off of in every single course and all the way through the program. And then especially with the internship experience. And to be a, to be an official mentor, they have to have at least three years uh, administrative experience in this 
<clears throat> because the state of Pennsylvania requires that uh, PD mm -hmm. does for licensure. So, and then the, uh, the nice thing, at least our program has expanded. We have students from Philly to Pittsburgh. We're hundred percent online. So the students never have to drive the Commonwealth. You don't have to worry about parking. You don't have to worry about extra expenses for gas and things of that nature, which is a luxury. And it's through the reputation, I believe, of the program that we've started expanding. We have students, I got five students coming from the Westchester school district. Um, we have students coming out from the Pittsburgh area with all the certification programs that exist in those areas. We're pretty proud that they're kind of gravitating out towards us. And if we don't have an affiliation agreement with your district, we will create one and we'll work with your district to get that in place. Um, the other nice thing is because I've been at the university now for almost two decades, I've trained hundreds of principals that are currently employed. Many of them are now superintendents. So therefore, we have lots of connections and uh, network of alum that really support and, you know, not only feed the program, but support the program in many different ways. So that mentor is critical to, and, and here's the other thing, those that in the audience are watching the video, well, I'm not real happy with my administration and, or I don't know if I really want to learn under that type of leader. Well, then I work with them. We can find other ways and get you placed in other schools or co get you experiences working with other administrators out and about. And then I am, uh, I'm a believer because a lot of people believe that it's a, sometimes in certain schools, it's the good old boys club. So every female student, I want to make sure that they have some experience or exposure through their internship with us, you know, a, high quality female administrator so that I make sure those connections occur as well and vice versa. Same with the males. So. Yeah. No, that's, that's great. Um, Aaron can Aaron and Holly, could you please talk about your experience with your mentor and the role they've played in, in your role and in, in your success in the program out here? Yeah. So I don't know if we specifically talked about this yet, but um, the principles requires multiple experiences across all three levels. And so most of my internship hours have been done at the middle school level, which is where my mentor is. And first and foremost, I have a great relationship with my mentor. Um, he's actually been in the district the same amount of time as an administrator. He's been my administrator my, my entire 10 years. When he moved, I seem to follow too. Um, so I I feel very comfortable with him. And he has been gracious and has opened his door and given me opportunities to be acting principal some days. Um, if he's not there, I'm like his substitute essentially. And I think that just becomes your the trust that you have. Yeah. And the assistant principal um, that I had last year, he is now up at the high school. And again, we have a great relationship and trust. And so I feel like he's kind of my mentor at the high school level and just having that rapport they all they all have been with open arms i guess i'm i'm fortunate and i love working with i prefer saying i love working with my principals because i don't feel like i work for them and um they have given me a lot of opportunities within and different perspectives on things and constantly checking in and there are some times too that they feel that they're comfortable enough to to talk off the record from administrator to teacher, more administrator to administrator, um, because I they know they they I mean they essentially recruited me. So, so um, yeah, I've had a really great experience, but again, I'm very fortunate to have um, very supportive administrators. Sure, that's great, and uh, Holly. I as well am blessed with four great administrators that I've been working with. Two of them are actual graduates of this program. Oh, okay. And they've provided me with countless hours of on-the-job on experience, for instance, investigating, checking cameras, being a part of parent meetings, interviews. Um, there was also, what else, professional development opportunities where I was able to prepare and plan and lead um, and I also have been a mentor for my colleagues and that middleman for if my colleagues have questions with PAE TAP or any LEA, LEA. So I've been that person just to kind of help them out yeah. and support them. 
Wow, that's great. That's great. So I see we're coming up on, on almost 40 minutes. A couple more questions here. Um, so now that you're feeling, you know, you're you're you know nearing the end of the program, it sounds like you've got about a month left, right? Um, how are you feeling in terms of your confidence level um to move into a principal role or a supervisory role, I should say, as well? Uh, yeah. yeah, so I think you made the comment at the beginning of you're sitting in the seat. It's all kind of like all eyes on you now. Yes. And I feel confident that I'm not alone. And I had just shared this with our class last week. My initial thought when going to administration was I'm going to be alone in my office. I, I'm not that. I'm a people person. I went into teaching and education because I love kids. I love people. I love talking. <laughs> um, so after having this program, I realized I had a completely false identity of what I thought administration was. And I feel confident that I am not going to be what I thought an administrator would be. And I know that I can be that different person in a building. I could be that impact in a school district. And I, it requires a lot of self-reflection and figuring out, well, what what is the leader that you want to be who do you want people to be around and so i know there's a lot that you feel overwhelmed with when becoming an administrator you have the law <laughs> you mm -hmm. have finances you have this huge school of people that you're managing but i don't feel like i'm alone and even though you cannot call up somebody, you do have resources. And that's what I feel like I am validated after having this program is knowing that I have the resources that I that I have. I have tools. I have people. I have books. I have it all to be that successful person. So I would say my confidence level is pretty high up there. Um, and it's not to the confidence of arrogance because you don't you don't want to be that you want to be humble. Um now, as far as confidence with the praxis, I know I'll do great as far as the test. Me personally, I have a lot of test anxieties. <laughs> so mm -hmm. there's a lot of preparation going into that, but that is not a reflection on the program. That's a personal thing. Sure. Um, but I do feel confident in, in leading a building and having those resources and tools. Well, that's great. Great. Thank you, Aaron. And uh, Holly. Well, entering this program, I thought I knew a lot about admin being a great administrator but looking back i knew nothing uh, this program really taught me so much to to prepare me to enter that seat and it also allowed me opportunities to reflect back and with dr starmax and the other professors high expectations it really set the bar high and proved to me that I can do anything that I put my mind to. And through all of these experiences, I was able to learn and grow as a professional. And I'm excited to have that opportunity, hopefully within the next year or so, to uh, apply for a position in my district. That's great to hear. That's great to hear. Do um, <clears throat> you have any final advice for anyone who's watching? Any Anyone who might be sitting on the fence thinking, geez, I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if I want to do this. Not sure if I want to do it here. Any final advice that you would have for, for someone who might be thinking that? I would probably say just make sure you're truly committed and this is something that you really want to pursue with the principal certification or the supervisory cert because if you don't envision yourself taking on that role, this may be a giant waste of your time. However, I think there is still a lot to be learned in this program, whether you are moving into that avenue or not. Mm -hmm. But honestly, you have to be prepared to work. And all of these obstacles and all of the class expectations, they are preparing you for the principal's role. And you have to be ready to work. And another thing I wanted to mention, the Dr. Starmack as our, our advisor, is very flexible and creates a path for you that fits your life. I, like Aaron, wanted to rip the Band-Aid off quick, get this done, not because I wanted to rush the process, but I knew that there was openings in my school district and I wanted to be the most prepared that I could possibly be. So I was ready for when that position came up. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, I think if you're sitting on the fence, 
personally, when I was entering this, I had to think of where am I looking long term? I current in, in when I was looking at my school, I loved my leaders, including up to the superintendent. I love all of that. And I wanted to be a part of that. And I see things as a teacher that I can't change unless I have a role that I can influence. And yeah. so I think if you're sitting on the fence, you need to look long term and think, where do I see myself going? Where do I want to go? And, and what do I want to impact most? And if that's where you feel that you want to go, then I would say take the plunge because I I was hesitant at first and I'm so glad that I did because like I said, I have this new spark and this new fire that yeah. I, I, I see myself going and um, I currently don't have the goal of leaving my district. I'm not saying that won't ever happen. Mm -hmm. You never know. Um, but if you see yourself either moving to another district or wanting to move up in your district, you, I would say take the plunge. <laughs> sure. And I'm going to just add in a couple of points that anybody that's watching this or in the audience tonight, if you, you're not real sure and you come into the program and after a few classes or get halfway through and you're saying, yeah, this just isn't for me. Well, we do have a master's of curriculum instruction that you can easily move over into and still finish your master's degree, graduate and still have a, a high quality uh, degree, get your 24 post baccalaureate credits, do your 30 credit mm -hmm. master's degree and come out. And if you're sitting there saying, well, you know what, I, I, I just don't think I want to be a building principal. You could still come into that other master's that we have, which is a master's mm -hmm. of curriculum instruction. And I have students that are starting that because they take the school law, which is required. They take data-driven decisions, which is required. And some students, after just those two classes, say, you know what? Maybe I want to do a leadership program. Mm -hmm. And then they'll flip over and switch to a master's of ed leadership in either the supervisor or principal's track. So there is that option at Commonwealth as well for those people that might be on the fence. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, but, I mean, we, we've got something for everybody, essentially, right? And um especially in, in, in the field of education, for sure. Um, so I appreciate it. You know, Aaron, Holly, Dr. Starmack, really appreciate your time. Um, for anyone who's watching, um, you know, we appreciate you, you hanging in there with us. And uh, if you're watching the recording, please not hesitate to reach out to any of us. We are always happy to help, um, especially, you know, Dr. Starmack and I, we work for you, right? And we're Does happy anybody in the audience have questions? If you do, please put them in the chat so that yes. we can address them tonight before we leave. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So I'm just going to go ahead and wrap up the recording part and then we'll get to uh, the questions from people who are watching live. But again, uh, thank you, everybody. Um, really appreciate your time and we look forward to hearing from everybody here in the future. Thanks, everybody.